motorcycles with the same engine and chassis feel different? Short answer, yes, as different as night and day. But let me elaborate it for you. You can't expect identical twins to have the same personality. One could be an Olympic gymnast that's into chess and knitting and the other one could be a gym freak that's into heavy metal music and drums. Case in point, the Duke 390 and the Husqvarna Swartpilen 401. Both of them have the same engine and chassis but swing your leg over them and they are two completely different species of animals. Which one's for you? Let's find out. Let's kick things off with looks first. The Duke 390, it's unapologetically cool. It doesn't care if you like it or not. It is very sporty and it is very out there. Bold looks, very sharp angles and very bold colors. It screams ready to race even at a standstill. And that's what I really like about the bike. It is aggressive at any angle and it looks pretty to me which is why I have bought it. So, when it comes to detail, I really like the headlight and the surrounding LED lights. They are a little difficult to clean, which is a theme that goes around through the entire bike. Even the tank shrouds and the extensions over here have a big gap that accumulate quite a lot of dirt. And even after you pressure wash or you clean it with a wet mop, you're going to be having hard water marks right on that edge because it's just so difficult to clean. The same concept goes into the skeletalized uh, swing arm that again looks very pretty and shaves a lot of weight but it's very difficult to clean inside these nooks and crannies. The other nice thing about both these bikes is that the brake discs are on the other side so that when you park your bike on a side stand and you look at it from the opposite way everything is on display and it looks really pretty. Overall the KTM Duke is the fast, aggressive one. But the Swart Pillin 401 feels like the Duke 390's cousin that went to art school. And he got the Neo Retro Science down to a T. Rugged? Check. Minimalistic? Check. I definitely think that a Stormtrooper riding this bike will look so befitting in a Star Wars movie because of its very understated yet shouty looks. The matte finish pops, really pops and it looks very nice especially after it has rained over just like this. In fact, there is one change in terms of dynamics and how the bike feels that is physical and it's part of the design and that is the subframe where the Duke 390 had a single piece aluminum subframe, you now get a tubular subframe with pieces of plastic covering it but it looks very very nice and still minimalistic. I really like the LED headlamp in the front, it's big and imposing. And uh, overall, where the Duke 390 is the rebel, the Swart Pillin 401 is the gentleman. But it's that kind of a gentleman that might surprise you how wild he gets after a couple of drinks, if you know what I mean. two motorcycles might have the same engine, the KTM developed LC4C 399cc liquid cooled mill, but the Duke 390 and Swartpillen 401 serve it in a very different way. The Duke's engine is like a hyperactive kid after 5 cans of Coca-Cola. It's punchy, aggressive and always ready to go, go, go. This is a bike that likes being pushed to the edge and it's happiest when you're ringing out every last drop of power. The Swart Pillin 401 though is more like that friend who's always calm under pressure. Sure, it's got the same heart as the Duke but it delivers power in a smooth, controlled manner. No sudden bursts of energy here, just a steady, manageable ride that's perfect for anyone who doesn't want to feel like they're riding a caffeine fueled rocket. The suspension is where the real magic happens. Both of them have the same setup but 
The Duke is tuned for those who like their rides to feel like roller coasters. It sticks to smooth tarmac like glue, begging you to push harder and lean further. But take it on a bumpy road and you might start to feel like you're in a high-speed massage chair. The Swart Villain 401 meanwhile is like riding on a cloud by comparison. Its softer suspension eats up bumps and potholes much better, making it the bike you'll choose when the road gets tough. This little difference is because even though they share the same suspension, the Husky is heavier, making the rebound inherently softer. I did get to fiddle with the suspension setup and I rode both bikes back to back in their softest and hardest setting and the Husky noticeably is much more plush in every setting. That being said, thanks to this amazing Gen 3 chassis chair on these bikes, it is safe to say that both the bikes love to play. Okay, time to talk about how both these bikes feel under your bum. First, the Duke 390. It puts you in a stance that means business. You sit on the bike and the bike tells you, okay, time to get to work. Your seat is facing forward. So you are leaning forward from your bum, straight up. And even the handlebar is in a rather aggressive position. So you're always leaning into the bike, ready to take a corner and attack it like it owes you money. In fact, I really love the upward stance and it's not too aggressive that you will be cursing it in the city, but it's not too upright that you want to take it out on a lazy Sunday ride. The bottom half, however, is more on the relaxed side than it is on the aggressive side. And I think KTM knows that too because there are a set of holes on the chassis for you to be able to put a set of rear set foot pegs. In fact, KTM do make a set of rear set foot pegs for this motorcycle and sell them as a KTM power part. But sadly, KTM power parts have still not come to India yet. The Swartpillin 401 on the other hand is the more relaxed brother. It allows you to play around even in terms of ergonomics. The handlebar is slightly more upright and closer to you and uh, the digital screen has now taken a new place. It's not over the handlebar, it is a little further ahead. The foot pegs are in the same position as the Duke 390, but because the seat has so much more leverage and you're sitting a bit more upright, you can move around the motorcycle much better than the Duke 390. In fact, the Duke 390 can feel cramped really quickly for bigger people, but this motorcycle has a lot of room for many different sizes. So where the Duke 390 is the, hey, let's go, why are you so slow? Let's move, let's move. This is, oh, you want to chillax? Let's chillax. Oh, you want to go fast? Let's go fast. The more versatile out of both. All in all, I would say that the Swartpillin 401 is the more dailyable bike to have, but if you buy any of the two, you're not really going to be struggling on the daily, but in long distances, that's where this really shines. So which one is the right bike for you? If you are willing to give up a little bit of practicality and comfort in order to have a lot, a lot of fun, then the Duke 390 could very well be your two-wheeled soulmate. It is going to have you grinning like a child during Christmas every time you twist that throttle open. But if you want something more sedate, livable, sophisticated and comfortable, then the Swartpillin 401 makes so much more sense that I am pretty surprised as to why it does not sell in more numbers. But this comparison was not about sense at all, which is why I picked the Duke 390 because it is just so 
much more capable in terms of outright performance and that's what I wanted. But do let us know what are your thoughts on both these motorcycles and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? We are this close to 100,000. Please do so that we can get one nice plaque in our house. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.